Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. The husband is determined to make a special impression on his wife, but what kind? In today's story, we find out. Enjoy watching it. I've never heard of this, she smiled at me. I thought my father knew a lot about pistols, but I haven't heard about this. Maybe my father knows, I grinned. Ask him. I'm sure your father has read stories about the FD-45. As we walked, she seemed unwilling to let go of my hand. We walked around the park for a while when she pulled me to a bench, and we sat down. She wiggled her legs a little and stretched. The guy who was slowly running along the path crashed into a pole while looking at her. I laughed but didn't tell her about it. Jay told me to stay away from you, she smiled. Looks like it worked. I smiled back at her. Aubrey, what do you want to achieve here? I mean, what's your end goal? I understand what I'm going to do, but I don't want you to get hurt by this, so I need to know where you want your life to go after this. Barry, I hate Jay so much, I can feel it. I don't want him to die, but I'm ready for everything else. Yesterday, I decided to divorce him, but it's still not quite right. He took all my hopes and dreams and destroyed them in me. I want my dose of revenge too. Especially if I divorce him, I won't get a penny. I'll probably have to go back and live with my parents for a while, but even that is better than putting up with this any longer. I've been a waitress before, and it didn't kill me. I can do this again. Aubrey, in a divorce, you're probably entitled to half the assets, I said. So I had to find a good crooked lawyer who knows all about hiding assets and such. I don't want to pay Iris for ruining my life. She has a higher education, she can get a job. Barry, that's the point, she said. Jay is like a big city cowboy. He only has a hat but no cattle. Even the Camaro he drives, at least he's friends with the dealer, so there are no dealer plates on the car. But if Jay misses one paycheck, we'll be screwed. We can barely pay our mortgage now. If Jay and I get divorced, neither of us will get a penny. We don't even have enough money to be poor. I have nothing to lose. I told her my plan, and she started laughing. She added a few things I hadn't thought of, and we shook hands. We looked into each other's eyes and said what we were both thinking, this is the end of our neighborhood. Our plan seemed to create a new sense of intimacy between us, in addition to giving us what we both craved, revenge on our cheating spouses. We walked back along our street. While we were walking, Christy came out to meet us. Where have you been? She asked sweetly. We went for a run, I said. Is that what they call it now? She laughed. I just wanted you to know that I agree with Bart's proposal that he made to you yesterday. You're probably too tired today after your run, but you can keep me in mind. Then she returned to her porch with her children. I noticed that Aubrey didn't say a word while Christy was around. What does it mean? She asked. I explained to her the proposal Christy had made to Bart the day before. Aubrey's eyes narrowed as she looked at Christy. I decided to change the subject. Are you hungry? I asked. She nodded. Okay, how do you like the idea of taking a shower and then having a steak dinner on my balcony? Very, very good, she said, her smile returning as she walked into her house. I ran into my house and up the stairs, skipping two steps at a time, straight into the shower. I actually bounced on my way back down the stairs. Iris stood up from the couch and walked over to me. You seem to be in a better mood, she said. I walked past her and went out into the garden. I looked around and realized that I needed to get the meat first. I was looking in the freezer when Iris came up behind me. What are you looking for? I've already prepared dinner for you, dear, she said. I cooked pasta. You always love it because it replenishes the glycogen in your muscles that gets lost after a long run. I was thinking about what you suggested yesterday, I said. I think you should be free to explore your affair to the limits of your curiosity. Um, thanks, she said, but I don't want this anymore. I want to work on repairing our marriage. I really think you should try this, I said. You should get over this completely. At the very least, find out what you like and what you don't. Try a few different things, who knows, it might come in handy. This could be good for both of us. 
Are you thinking about participating? She asked, her face lighting up. I knew I had made the right decision. Hell no, I snapped. If I treat you so badly that I can barely stand to be in the same room with you, why would I want to watch someone have a night with you, let alone do it myself? It was like I hit her. She came up to me, angry. I know what's the matter. You're just giving me permission because you want Aubrey. Jay was right to be afraid. You just think that if I'm allowed to sleep with guys, then you can have your share with Aubrey. Forget it. I already told you I'm no longer interested in this. It cost me too much. I just laughed. Barry, you're looking at this wrong. Nothing happens between me and anyone else except you from now on. Yesterday, it all ended. I will never make this mistake again. Did you notice how easy it was for me to just stop it like that? There have never been any emotional attachments or romantic feelings between me and other guys, or vice versa. What we did was not about romance, it was only about intimate. They don't want a future with me, they all love their wives, and I love you. Neither of us wanted to risk our marriages. It was just for fun. Do you think I had fun? Iris shouted. Then I just turned away from her and collected myself. Why are you taking out two steaks? She asked. Do you want me to have dinner with you? One for Aubrey, I said. Jay was right, she hissed. I don't want you to spend time with her. You two don't know how to do it right. You are too emotional, you'll end up falling in love with each other or something. She's not even your type. What do you mean she's not my type? I asked. I don't have a type. I'm your type, she said. So my type is a lying, deceptive woman of easy virtue? I asked. Okay, you're right. She's not like that. What I meant was that she's not built the way you like women, she said. Iris, you're dumber than I thought, I said. I don't like someone for their appearance. I loved you for the person I thought you were. I loved our conversations, our shared values, and a thousand other things about you that were just beautiful. I wouldn't care if you weighed 80 pounds or 800 pounds. I fell in love with a woman I thought I knew. It's like algebra, Iris. I loved you. You have big breasts, and that's why I love big breasts. I didn't just go out and decide I only liked big women. That would be stupid. I just admired and learned to appreciate all the things you had because I loved you. I could just as easily fall in love with someone with a slim, pretty body as I could with someone with a larger body. Barry, why do you keep talking in the past tense? She asked. Iris, a big part of me died yesterday, I told her. I told you this morning that it all started again. Now, when I look at you, all I see is you cheating on me. I'm not sure I can handle this. But you have to, she cried. Why? I asked. Life will go on, whether we are together or not. I'm not trying to be tough or cruel, Iris, but sometimes you can hurt someone so badly that they simply cannot recover. Look at Aubrey. Look at what you and the boys did to her. When we first moved here, she was one of the nicest people we knew. Look how she acted for a whole damn year because of how much fun you all had. Can you imagine how she suffered all this time, hoping Jay would stop? In the end, she just fell out of love with Jay. You knocked all the love out of her with your fun. But Jay still loves her, Iris said. He's going crazy now. He thinks that you two will start sleeping together and that you will take her away from him. Remember all those hurtful things he said last night? Remember how he said that trading for her wasn't a fair deal? You said the same thing. You said that if you had a choice, you would never agree to something like that. Iris, that's what you and that idiot Jay don't understand. I barked. Aubrey and I had no choice. No one came to us and said, Hey, Barry, do you want to try female swapping? It'll be fun. Barry, I'll be with Iris, and you can have some real intim with Aubrey, and then we'll switch back. Nobody said that, Iris. Neither Aubrey nor I received such a message. Now that it's all gone, you, Jay, and the rest of the musketeers want to talk about choices and what you want or don't want to happen. But it's not your turn to choose, Iris. You and Jay have already made your choice, and now you are unhappy with it. It's unpleasant, isn't it? Iris just sat at our kitchen table with her head down. 
she seemed to really think about what I said. I heard footsteps on the back porch. When I opened the door, I turned to Iris. Iris, I said softly. She raised her head and looked at me with eyes full of tears. Are you still having fun? Aubrey and I sat on my deck grilling our steaks. We laughed, talked, and had a great evening as if we didn't notice that Jay and Iris were looking at us from their windows. One interesting thing happened that night, Debbie came to us. She wanted to talk to us about something, but Volley, of course, came up with an excuse to go to Jay. They both sat by the window, so angry that they could chew nails. One day, when I saw them looking at me, I raised my hand as if it were a gun. I pretended to shoot, and the windows slammed shut. At first, Aubrey didn't talk to Debbie either, but it soon became clear to even her that Debbie really didn't know anything about what was going on. We decided not to tell her anything yet because we didn't know how she would react. The rest of the week was similar, except I was finally able to get out and actually run. Aubrey borrowed Debbie's bike. There were even a few nights where I ran slower than I could so she could ride in front of me. Friday came, and we decided it was time to let Jay, Iris, and company find out what punishment awaited them. I told Iris, and she told everyone else that we would have a meeting on Sunday right after the Lions game. On Sunday morning, I went for a long run. I ran 22 miles and felt good but tired. I have to admit that I missed Aubrey during my run, but I didn't know what to do about it. When I got home, Iris had prepared something for me to eat, and as had become the norm, I walked past her. My legs were so tired that I could barely move without cramping and straining. I took a shower and started stretching. A few of my friends from work arrived shortly after, and I ordered pizza and showed them around my living room. When the pizza delivery guy arrived, I noticed Jay and Val sitting nervously on Jay's porch. They smiled when they saw that I ordered three large pizzas. They thought that since I almost never ate more than two bites even after a particularly hard run, everything was back to normal. I nodded politely to them and turned to go back into the house. Right before the game started, the doorbell rang. I apologized and went to open the door. I saw Jay, Wally, and Bart standing on my porch. Apparently, they didn't notice the other cars in my driveway. You're early, I said. The meeting isn't until after the game. Aubrey walked up onto the porch just then, wearing the tightest tank top I had ever seen. Her breasts weren't as big as Iris's, but they looked huge on her small body. It was obvious she wasn't wearing a bra. She was also wearing shorts that were so tight and short that even Daisy Duke would have complained about them. She carried another plate of cookies and entered the house through the door that I held open. Wally and Bart gulped loudly, and Jay looked like he was about to lay an egg. Well, guys, I said, see you after the game. Why did you order so much pizza for two people? Bart asked. Before I could answer, Derek Coleman, one of my colleagues, came out of the living room. Um, Barry, there's a girl sitting in your chair. I mean, a woman, and it's not your wife. The guys and I are interested, he added. Be polite to her, I said. She is also my friend. She's watching the game with us. He shook his head and then turned to go back to the living room. How are we supposed to watch TV with her there, he muttered. Jay became even angrier after hearing this. Do you have guests who watch the game? Bart asked. Of course. The best way to enjoy something is to share it with friends. Isn't that what you did to my wife? Jay boiled when he heard my question. Anyway, I thought I had friends, but it turned out these are not the people I should associate with, so I found new friends. See you at 4.30. I closed the door with a loud bang. I watched the game with three guys from work. They were eating pizza and yelling at the screen, but I noticed that most of their attention was directed at Aubrey. They wanted to know who she was and how I knew her. Only a few of them knew that I was having problems in my marriage. Of course, my football buddies had already met her and told everyone about her over the past few weeks, but few were prepared for the reality. Aubrey seemed to be having a great time too. After dinner, the dancing began. I'm not the best dancer, but we got a lot of attention. Aubrey was asked to dance several times, and she turned everyone down. He gets very jealous, she told them. He really doesn't like sharing his toys. Things got heated in the car on the way home. So, are you ready? 
I mistakenly asked her. I've been ready for several weeks, she said. Have you chosen a place? There's not enough space in your car. I've heard that young people do it in the back seat, but I don't think both of us can fit in there. I was talking about tomorrow, I laughed. Tomorrow the real show will finally begin. She laughed. All this will end soon. Debbie is so angry at Wally that she can barely look at him. I wish we could deal with Wally first to ease her suffering. I'd like to deal with Iris first to ease my suffering, I said. I checked the cameras. Did you know that yesterday she was with him again? I'm no longer interested in that horny guy's night, she said. I'll just be glad when he stops following me around and trying to persuade me to play with him. Besides, we need to worry about our own intimate lives. Aubrey, you're too special to just roll in the hay, I smiled. You're the kind of girl who should be. I'm not as special as you think, she said, running her hand over me. I am an ordinary girl. Don't try to turn me into someone I'm not, and you can take me wherever you want, to the hay or anywhere else. Aubrey, I'm serious, I said. Me too, she said, putting her hand over my mouth to calm me down. When this nonsense is over, I want us to stay together. So I need to claim you before Christy tries to, I said. Christy is a woman of easy virtue, just like Iris, I laughed. Well, she is much thinner than Iris, Aubrey said, and I couldn't stop laughing. All the neighbors' eyes were on us as usual. I hugged her and kissed her. I was going to just take a bite, but Aubrey had other plans. She hugged me and pulled me toward her. Almost too soon, we were pushed apart when Jay opened the front door like a father checking on his teenage daughter. Aubrey and I barely noticed him there. A line had been crossed between us. I still don't understand how I managed to leave her that night, but we both knew that everything had changed. Walking into the house, I noticed Iris sitting in the kitchen. I looked at her and smiled. How is she? She asked angrily. Is she better in bed than me? I really don't think so, I replied. Jay told me she was kind of boring. I may not be as beautiful as her, but I am much better at night. I would do everything you ever wanted to try if you would only give me a chance. If she's so terrible in bed, why is Jay so desperate to get her back? I asked. He loves her, Iris snapped. He can't forget her, just like I can't forget you. If he loves her so much and you love me, then why were you with him yesterday? I asked. She looked scared. We have cameras in both houses, I said. This will all end soon. But she began. Iris, just save it, I said. We really don't care. Aubrey and I were just trying to give you two a chance to get us back. I think you guys need intimate more than love. Someday, you will become a lonely old woman. I left her standing there, crying. The next morning, bright and early, I woke up to the sound of hammering. I looked out the window and saw Jay standing on the stairs putting up Christmas decorations. Aubrey guided him from the ground below. As I watched, he struggled to get a large, lighted inflatable Santa on the roof. As I left the house to start my run, I waved to Aubrey, she blew me a kiss. Jay smiled and waved at me. Are you going to run away with me? I asked. Iris walked out onto our porch. She looked like hell. Barry. I can't, Aubrey said. Last night was the most magical night of my life. It was truly magical, but I have to seriously think about it. I'm going back to my husband. Well, I hope you'll be happy. I smiled as I went for a run. I saw Bart and Christy heading toward Jay's house. There were even children with them. Wally and Deb were going there too. Deb waved to me as I ran past, and Wally waved, too. I waved and said hi to Deb while ignoring Wally. When I reached the corner, I stopped running. I snuck into Wally's garage and grabbed a bucket of chemicals that Aubrey had ordered online with Deb's help. She had ordered chemical accelerators using Wally's credit card. We also hid some of the chemicals in the trunk of Wally's car. I quickly coated the deck around Wally's barbecue with chemicals. I also sprayed chemicals on the awning near the deck and the side of Wally's house. The chemicals should have dried completely in about half an hour. Aubrey needed to keep them occupied during this time. When I got home from my run, Aubrey and Jay were sitting on their porch talking. 
Aubrey and I have it all worked out, buddy, Jay said. Well, screw you, I said. I went into the house and took a shower. As I was getting dressed, Iris came into my room. Jay and Aubrey made up, she said. Everyone is talking about it. She even promised to let him have a night with her if he did everything she said today. Great for them, I snapped. Barry, if she can forgive him and give him another chance, why can't we try again, she asked. I promise this will never happen again. I just looked at her and laughed. Iris, you promised me this weeks ago, and you were still with Barry yesterday. I don't believe a single word you say. I see us on the road to divorce, but I promise to be as fair to you as you deserve. As I finished getting dressed, Iris watched me nervously. I think she thought I would leave. Then where are you going? She asked. I have to go to work for a while, I said. There's a problem with one of our trucks. She turned and left. As I was leaving the house, I saw her walking towards Jay. Get away from me, Iris, he barked at her. Everything is over. Aubrey left the house, and she and Jay sat on their porch. She didn't even look at me, she got in Jay's truck and they left about the same time I did. I drove through town and picked up one of our mobile generator trucks. These trucks were regular Ford F-150s, but with powerful commercial generators mounted on the back. My friend was watching the warehouse today. I told him I needed a generator to power an outdoor Christmas show, no paperwork or recording, so neither of us would get into trouble, but I owed him a favor. While I was away, I contacted my partner to let him know that I would soon be ready to start our new business. Mr. Reynolds' lawyer contacted me a few weeks ago and arranged a meeting between us. He liked my idea and wanted to go for it if I could provide the required areas. When I got home, I parked the generator truck behind the house where no one would see it. I jumped over the fence and went into Jay's backyard. Aubrey left the back door open and I walked into the house. I went upstairs and walked out onto their back balcony. I climbed up to their roof where I turned off one of the lights on the giant Santa. That one light meant that poor Santa wouldn't turn on. I attached two thick cables to Santa and sprinkled water around him. I made sure that the wires attached to Santa were also exposed in several places, then I went back down to the balcony. From there, I returned through the house back to my yard. I ran the cables and connected them to the generator. A short time later, I heard Jay's truck pull into their driveway. He and Aubrey were arguing. He wanted to take her for a ride in his Camaro, but she made him go in the truck. He complained that she was still acting and ordering him around. You should be happy that I'm even thinking about taking you back, she screamed. So don't start whining about your damn car. I should have made you give the damn thing to Barry, but I knew he wouldn't want it. And if you're even thinking about getting between my legs tonight, you better make sure my jewelry is the best on the street. They're the only ones on the street. Jay snapped, so that makes them the best until someone else comes up with theirs. Why are you acting like a stupid? You've never talked to Barry like that. Because I love Barry, she said. I'm just married to you. I think I was more shocked than Jay. He was furious, but I was shocked. He turned away from her angrily. I'll go check your damn lights, he snapped. For the first time, I noticed how small our little neighborhood really was. Everyone heard the argument and came out to see what it was about. I quickly ran out the back of my house and started the generator. Then I returned to the house and sat down in the kitchen. Aubrey is evil, Iris said from behind me. I talked to her before. You didn't have an intimate with her last night. She really wanted to, but you refused her. Do you have anything to say? Iris, I asked coldly, you're really mad at me, but you turned her down because deep down you still love me, she said. Even after all the mistakes I've made, you still love me. We have hope. No, I don't, I said evenly. I'm just not a woman of easy virtue. I'm not going to mess up our divorce by sleeping with another woman before filing. She went outside, and I heard Jay complaining about the stupid decorations through the door. I went out and sat on the porch, waiting for the inevitable. Bart waved to me from across the street, but I pretended not to notice. I didn't pay attention as Jay walked up his rickety stairs while Aubrey screamed at him from below. Debbie and Christy stood next to her. Jay made it to the roof and stood next to Santa. He grabbed Santa, 
touched one of the exposed wires and suddenly began twitching convulsively on the edge of the roof. Sparks flew from the wires and Jay fell off the roof. He didn't even scream. He hit the ladder, knocking it to the side, and fell awkwardly in front of Aubrey, Christy, and Debbie. All three women immediately began screaming. Bart, run to Jay. Call 911, he yelled at me. I nodded and ran into the house. I ran out the back and disconnected the cables from the generator. I then called 911 from my cell phone. Jay still hadn't regained consciousness when the ambulance arrived. I left the house and returned the truck to the warehouse. Well, I thought things didn't go according to plan. Jay shouldn't have fallen off the roof. He should have just ruined the decorations so Aubrey could get mad at him. I was sure Aubrey would be very angry. Oh well, that part of the plan was hers. She really hated Jay, the only person I thought hated that man as much as I did. But all I wanted to do was make him foreclose on his mortgage and lose his house. A few hours later, Aubrey returned from the hospital. She came straight to me. Jay has serious electrical burns and a broken back, she said. Not exactly what we planned, but I'll accept it. One ready, three left, she smiled. Then I decided never to anger this woman. However, there was something I wanted to know. Aubrey, can I ask you something? I said quietly. She smiled and nodded. I already know what you want to ask, she said. I pretty much ruined everything today, didn't I? I looked at her. Barry, you only found out a few weeks ago that Iris was cheating on you. I had a lot more time. For a long time, I was alone, although surrounded by people. A few weeks ago, you became my friend. You are the best person I know. You are exactly what I always hoped Jay would be. So yeah, I'm sorry I almost ruined our plan, but I don't know how to hide or be cunning. When I feel something, it comes out, and I tell the truth. I don't care who heard it or who knows it, so you'll have to get used to hearing it. I love you. Life in the area has become quite interesting. Iris began to drink and eat much more than she should. Wally was still walking on tiptoes. Deb continued to pretend that nothing was happening. She was ready to divorce Wally and had already secretly moved a lot of her things out of the house. She had to be ready for our plan when this happened. We all gathered to discuss Jay's accident. Deb suggested we have a barbecue to discuss how we could help Jay and Aubrey. This was the norm for us because Wally loved barbecue. He had the biggest and most expensive grill in the area. I told them I didn't care about helping Jay, but I would be happy to help Aubrey. I bet Iris snorted angrily. So the next day, Deb and Wally had a barbecue, which was attended by Bart and Christy, Iris and I, and Aubrey, who came from the hospital where she was visiting Jay. Wally declared the barbecue officially open and lit the grill. Within seconds, flames were racing out of control from the grill to the awning above it and into the house. Wally ran for the hose, but nothing worked because Deb had turned off the water at the valve inside the house. Bart called the fire department, but by the time they arrived, the entire house was already on fire. The firefighters fought bravely, but the house was lost. A few days later, the police came and arrested Wally on suspicion of arson. Deb filed for divorce while Wally was in prison. I think Wally really believed that Deb was setting him up for having a night with Iris. The insurance company paid her part of the value of their home because she was not involved in the arson. Wally, of course, claimed that he had been framed, but the police had too much evidence against him. He eventually pleaded guilty and was sentenced to three to five years. If he had gone to trial, the sentence would have been twice as long. A wealthy developer, Ryan Reynolds, bought the site and arranged for the remains of Wally's house to be demolished. However, the demolition crew mistakenly demolished another house. When Bart, Christy, and their children arrived home, they found their house had been demolished. The team was already starting to load garbage into several large dump trucks when Bart arrived, and he was furious. Aubrey allowed them to stay with her for a few days until they decided what to do, they had terrible luck. Wally was their accountant, and somehow their insurance policy expired while they were trying to get a new one. Ryan Reynolds came to the rescue again. He agreed to pay Bart and Christy the appraised value of their property. 
Unfortunately, the real estate market was down, so they received much less than they had invested in the property. Every day when Aubrey returned from the hospital, she told me that Jay wanted to see me. Finally, about three weeks after the accident, I agreed to go. He looked terrible, he had lost a lot of weight and could barely move his arms. Hey, buddy, he said. Thanks for coming. He looked at Aubrey. Honey, could you leave us for a moment? I already told you not to call me anything other than my name, Jay, she said, smiling in a way that only someone who truly hates you can. When you're downstairs, my name is Aubrey. Don't call me anything else. She smiled at me as she closed the door. She's definitely going to leave me, Jay said sadly. This is entirely your fault, Jay, I snapped. What do you want? Well, everyone else in the area came to see me except you, he began. I really missed you, and I kind of needed a favor. It's times like these that you realize who you can really count on. I just looked at him and started tapping my foot. Barry, I have a problem, he continued. I'm a little behind on my mortgage payments. Damn, Jay, you're always on time, I grinned. He sighed and tried to continue. Yesterday, we received a notification that the bank wants to seize the house. I either have to pay the full amount, or I'll end up on the street. Why don't you sell the Camaro? I asked. It's on lease, he said sadly. They already took it when I missed the last payment. I looked at him and laughed, but then I suddenly noticed that his legs weren't moving at all. Jay, what's wrong with your legs? I asked. Barry, when I broke my back, I lost the use of my legs. My arm strength and control are improving, but they say I will never walk again. I have no sensitivity below the waist. The most I can hope for is that I can sit up on my own. Most likely, I will be in a wheelchair. I will be on permanent total disability when I am discharged from the hospital, but it still won't save my house, and it won't save my marriage either. I'll try to do something for you, I said. I felt like crap. I wanted revenge for what happened and how it ruined my marriage, but how much would it take to be enough? I burned down Wally's house. He was in prison. What Wally regretted most was not being in prison and losing his career. It's not like he lost his house and got a criminal record, it was Deb's loss. Bart and Christie's marriage was so damaged that they regularly had an intim with other people. They still lost their home, and rumor has it that the place they were hoping to move to wasn't that nice. According to Iris, things weren't going very well for them either, she was sure that divorce was in their future. My best friend, Jay, has lost the ability to walk and will soon be homeless. Aubrey and I allowed our anger and pain to turn us into monsters. The worst part was that the person I should have felt the most anger towards had still not been punished. Iris was the one who truly betrayed me, and she still walked freely. It was she who swore to be faithful to me, but nothing with her had happened. The problem was that when I looked at Jay, all my anger just melted away. I didn't want to hurt anyone anymore, I just wanted to move on with my life and find peace. I had no idea how to cope with my new feelings. When I left Jay's hospital room, before I could take two steps from the door, Aubrey was next to me. What happened, dear? She asked. What do you mean? I asked. Barry, I can feel it when you're upset, she said sincerely. You're really suffering right now. What about Jay's suffering? I asked. Jay? She asked. She smiled as she said this. I was about to say something, but she smiled and let me know that she understood. Maybe, and I'm just saying maybe, we went a little overboard with our revenge on Jay, she said. But it's really hard to feel sympathy for a person who fills your head with lie after lie. He was my first man, took me away from my family, and made many promises but did not fulfill any of them. Her face was very sad. Maybe I went overboard, but you don't know what it's like to have someone complain about everything you do. He never cared that I was unhappy. All I ever heard was, you're not coping well. We were unhappy before it happened. There, I watched how you treated Iris. You treated her like she was the most important thing in the world, and whether you know it or not, she took advantage of you. She was always telling other women how you did everything. She said you looked more like her damned butler than her husband. I thought about it and realized that maybe she was right. So I didn't like the situation anymore, and I started to resent Jay. 
When I saw them together, it just turned into hatred. There were times when I lay awake in bed, dreaming of torturing them, and now we were so close to hurting them the same way they hurt us, she said. Just think, the two of them would be homeless and destitute. She's too damn lazy to work, and he's disabled. Personally, I don't think that's enough. I looked at her and saw the rage on her face. To hell with them, she spat. To hell with both of them. Aubrey, what happens next? I asked. She looked at me in surprise. Then we, she began. What? I asked again. What should we do, dear? She looked at me, and for a second, I saw uncertainty in her eyes. Apparently, she hadn't thought about revenge. So I guess we'll find some other way to make them even more miserable, I said. Or maybe we will find other people who have hurt us in our lives and get revenge on them too. My third grade teacher was a real piece of work. So what if I couldn't write Mississippi? Who cares if I didn't know where to put the damn commas? If she's still alive, we'll go after her. We'll go down to the nursing home and knock the crap out of her chessboard. We won't collect the pieces either. Aubrey smiled as she watched me. Is this what we're going to do for the rest of our lives? I asked. What's on your mind? She asked. I grabbed her and pulled her toward me. I kissed her. Would you rather spend the rest of our lives taking revenge on others? I asked. Forget about them. Let's leave the past behind and move on. We'll just deal with the outstanding issues and move on with our lives. To hell with them. We'll be better off without them. We have each other, and I promise that we will be happy. We won, Aubrey. The game is over, and we won. I really don't care what we do, she said, as long as we do it together. I'm happy, so let's take care of this unfinished business so we can start fresh. Then we went home. Aubrey still didn't hesitate to leave Jay alone in the hospital. I called Ryan and explained the situation to him. Although it was not part of our original deal, we could make a lot of money from this venture if we could pull it off. Taking over Jay's property would mean we would be home free. He told me that if what I wanted to do would bring us property, he was fine with it. He also invited me to come to his office to look at the preliminary drawings. While Aubrey went to check on the guests at her house, I went to see Iris. I told her it was time for us to talk. She really didn't look very good. All the stress and emotional turmoil we went through took a toll on her. Iris, I always thought you were one of the most beautiful women I know, I said. You're also one of the smartest. She smiled, looking across the table. I wanted to do it as softly as possible. Most of what I wanted to tell her was true. I wanted to massage her ego a little to soften the blow. The last few weeks have been difficult for all of us. We cannot continue down this path. You're unhappy, Iris, and so am I. Sometimes things don't go the way we want, so it becomes necessary to start again. Then she started crying, and for the first time in weeks, I held her hand. I stood up, walked over to her side of the table, and hugged her. You want a divorce, don't you? She asked. I nodded. But we are undergoing counseling to help us correct this, she said. We both know that counseling is a waste of time and money, I replied. The cut was too deep. We could never patch it up with a band-aid. But you love me, she said. You love me so much. And that was part of the problem, I said. I loved you so much that I trusted you completely. So when you failed, when you cheated, it pretty much destroyed my faith in us. If I had loved you less, we might have gotten through this. If I thought of you the way Jay and Bart think of their wives, as someone to live with and have intimate with, it would be easier to forget. But Jay loves Aubrey, she said. No, Iris. Jay thinks Aubrey belongs to him. She is his property, just like his Camaro. She is something beautiful that he can show off to make himself look cool. But like his car, she is no longer his. So what should we do? She asked. We split everything 50-50, I said, and we try to remain friends. Why should we do this? She asked. Iris, I still love you. I can't give up on this so quickly. Aubrey had to endure a year of constant humiliation from Jay to do this. I really still love you. Then why can't we stay together? 
she asked. It won't work because the trust is gone, Iris. After I caught you, it really hurt us. But you didn't stop even then. Love is great, but it is trust and faith in each other that holds people together. But we can take it back, she said. I know we can, she continued. I'll just put on one of those ankle bracelets they put on guys on parole. I will never leave the house. We can buy new locks so I can't leave when you're not there, and no one can get in. I just shook my head. That's not trust, Iris, I said. It's more like you become the prisoner, and I become the overseer. I couldn't live like this, and neither could you. Eventually, we would start to hate each other. But I don't want to lose you, she said. Iris, you've already lost me. But at least this way, we are honest with each other, and that is the way to rebuild trust. It will take time, but eventually, we can be friends again. Who knows what might happen in the future? What do you want me to do? She asked. Well, I think you'll need a lawyer, I said. We live in a common property state. Most likely, we will split everything in half, 50 fiftieths. We will have to sell the house and split the proceeds. We have to admit it, none of us need a house that size. Besides, all your friends are gone. Wally burned down his house, he and Deb divorced. You could say they took Bart and Chris with them. From what I heard, they are also going to get divorced. Iris shook her head. Jay will lose his home too, I said. I'm sure he and Aubrey will divorce as well. We can say that you ruined four marriages with your behavior, I added with a shrug, looking at her with a guilty expression. So our area doesn't exist? Iris looked at me with horror on her face. I think what we just talked about made her realize the consequences of her selfish actions. She and her accomplices destroyed four families and changed the lives of ten people. Eight were adults, but two children's lives would also be affected. I hoped that this awareness would bring about good changes. Although I tried to give her hope, I knew we would never be together again. I gave her this little lie about how we could still be friends and who knows what might happen in the future for two reasons. The first was that I was tired of hurting people over this. The second was that the most dangerous opponent is the one who has no hope. As long as she thought we had a chance, Iris would act much more rationally during the divorce process. I thought Jay and Aubrey were back together, Iris said. At least, I replied. I doubt that. After they made peace so recently, she will leave him. It is especially difficult to leave when he is injured. Plus, they are now perfect for each other. She's dead in bed, and he's dead from the waist down. I would call it a union made in hell. This will probably be the couple that survives. She laughed an ugly laugh that didn't suit her at all. I'm going to the hospital to see Jay, I said. I have to tell him about the deal I arranged for him. I thought you hated him. Why help him? He destroyed our marriage. She looked at me like I was crazy. Iris, he didn't do it alone. You are a grown woman and can make decisions. All you had to do was say no. Should I try to leave you pennies in the divorce? I'm tired of being angry at everyone. I just want to move on and see what life has in store for me. Everything is over. I went to Aubrey, who lived next door. Chris was collecting children's clothes. They still didn't have much. They already had money for a house, but that wouldn't be enough because they would both have to pay lawyers. They also needed to find two new places to live instead of just one. She smiled at me as I entered the room. Hi, handsome, she said. There's time for Chris, I replied. He didn't come to you, Aubrey said from the top of the stairs. The tone of her voice was very sad, and she looked tired. I held out my hand, and she came down and took it. On the way to the hospital, I asked her what happened. You're wrong, darling, she said. I told you we weren't too hard on that idiot. He refuses to give me a divorce. He says we will be together until one of us dies. He told me that till death do us part. I laughed out loud and almost lost control of the car. Yes, I said. I told her about the conversation with Iris, and she started crying. I'm glad my misfortune makes you happy, she said. You'll soon be free from this, and I'll be with a man who doesn't love me. He considers me his toy or some kind of trophy. Yes, I said again. 
Aubrey, Jake can't stop you from divorcing him. The law doesn't work that way. All he can do is delay it. Worst case scenario, you can just leave. Just walk away from him. Life is too short to be unhappy. She pouted and looked at me. But I had plans, she said. I wanted to be with one guy, and he seems obsessed with doing everything right. I can't imagine him wanting to be with a married woman. I think the guy you want loves you enough to accept you in any form, I said. In return, I received the biggest, happiest smile I'd ever seen. At the hospital, I sat on Jay's bed. I explained to him that the bank was indeed going to seize his property. He was absolutely right about how things would happen. He needed to find the entire mortgage amount, about $90,000, in two days. The worst part was that in this difficult real estate market, his house would probably only sell for $60,000. He was seriously in the red. If the bank foreclosed, it would also destroy his credit rating. He didn't have a 401k or any savings, he lived practically from paycheck to paycheck. In two days, he would be homeless and broke. I told him that I had found a buyer for his house. My buyer was willing to pay the bank and give him $20,000 in cash. It wasn't much, but it was all I could do. He looked at me as if I had saved him from a fate worse than death. Did you hear that, dear? He said to Aubrey. Barry pulled me out of the fire. Now all we have to do is find another place to live. I'll be in the hospital for a couple more weeks, so you'll have a lot of work to do. I already told you not to call me darling or sweetie or anything like that, she snapped. I will help you in exchange for you giving me a divorce. Other than that, I have nothing to tell you. You've been cheating on me for over a year. I'm sorry, but I can't forget this or forgive you. Jay, you need to let me go. Never, he said. Every time you try to go to court, I'll go to the hospital. I'm seriously injured, you know I am disabled. No one will look kindly on a woman who leaves her husband when he is hospitalized. You'll have to deal with it. You will forgive me eventually. She simply turned and left the room, slamming the door. Sorry you had to see that, Barry, he said. You see, this, underscore underscore, is worthless. She's lucky that I love her. I pulled her out of the countryside in Kansas just because she was beautiful. They barely had any sewage there. She's terrible in bed, but she's mine, damn it. She will be with me forever, even though she doesn't want it. But that's why our friendship is so important, Barry. When things are bad, I can't count on her, but I always could on you. Count? I'm so glad we're friends again. Now I need to contact Bart and Wally, damn it, we're getting the band back together. Actually, no, I said. We're not friends anymore, Jay. I won't save your fifth place anymore. You destroyed my marriage and stabbed me in the back in the worst possible way. If this is how you treat your friends, I don't want to be one of them. Iris and I are getting divorced. You and I will most likely never see each other again. With those words, I turned and followed Aubrey. The next few days were busy for both of us. She started looking for a house for the two of us while I went to meetings to work out my divorce from Iris. Unfortunately, the lawyer she hired was out for blood. We both agreed to split our assets in half, 50 to 50, but she wanted alimony. I explained to her and her lawyers that I refused to pay her for ruining our marriage. The real reason was that I didn't want us to be tied down financially. I was going to be rich, and I didn't see the point in sharing it with the woman who cheated on me. In the end, we agreed to split everything in half. I will also give Iris 40% of my 401k when I retire or withdraw money, since it's only a few thousand, and I plan to withdraw it next week. She won't get much. I will also give Iris $24,000 in a lump sum instead of paying $1,000 a month in child support. This worked for me. I transferred half of our savings and funds from our checking account to a new account in my name. She will receive a check for $44,000 since we only had $40,000 equity in the house, and then I'll be done with her. Iris couldn't believe how quickly I sold the house. She didn't realize that this was agreed upon before we even started talking about divorce. When everything settles down, I will receive a lump sum payment of a quarter of a million dollars and will receive 4% of the profits of the new luxury shopping center that will be built on the side of our neighborhood with the purchase of all the lots. 
Ryan got his friends in Congress to zone the area for commercial use. This is how our area disappeared. Ryan kept his construction crews working around the clock. Construction of the shopping center took only six months. It's full of those chic shops that sell designer items. Everything there is overrated and named after some famous idiot. I couldn't believe the amount of money I get every month from this place. In a year, I'll be a millionaire, even with the cost of the house Aubrey and I bought. Yes, we are still together and still very happy. Aubrey turned out to be as passionate in bed as she looked. Jay just didn't bother teaching her. He had never shown her that night could be as enjoyable for her as it was for him. And now we come back to the present. Jay tried to contact me several times. I never answered him until last week. Last week, I decided to try again for Aubrey. Jay invited me to his barbecue. It looks like he hasn't given up trying to get his old company back. After 18 months, it might be time for him to get what he wanted. Aubrey kissed me when she got into my new 2012 Mustang. We moved the seat all the way back to make room for her belly, but she was comfortable. I programmed the GPS to Jay's new address and drove off. Aubrey kissed me as we drove, she kisses me a lot now. I was really surprised when I arrived at Jay's address. It was a trailer park, and he was not in the best condition. I think with $20,000, that's all Jay could afford. I parked in front of Jay's trailer and left Aubrey in the car. I needed to find a way to gently tell Jay that Aubrey and I were together. I knocked on the door and expected to hear the sound of a wheelchair, but I heard heavy footsteps approaching the door. Wow, I thought, medical science is doing wonders. I never expected the old lady's man to walk again. When the door opened, I was shocked to see that it wasn't Jay who opened it, it was my ex-wife, Iris. Her eyes widened when she recognized me. Oh God, she said, you look. Iris had never been a small woman, as I had already mentioned, but over the past year, she had gained a lot of weight. She now weighed over 300 pounds. Her hair was dull and thinning, even her huge breasts seemed to have sunk below her waist. I was sure that soon she would have to buy a wheelbarrow to carry herself around. Time and gravity had taken their toll. It was hard to see the beautiful woman I had loved for so long turn into this. Okay, maybe not that hard, but it was difficult to see it and not laugh. I smiled at her. Barry, are you ready? Is that why you came? Are you ready to take me back? Hey, Barry! I heard Jay call from the back of the house without answering Iris. I turned and saw him. He was not in a wheelchair, he had one of those motorized chairs and could move around in it quite well. I left the porch and quickly walked around the house where Jay was sitting. Iris followed me, her size seemed to make it difficult for her to walk. I knew you would come, Jay said. The rest of these idiots were never our friends, so I'm the only one who came. Is that so? I asked. I nodded. Bart and Christy got divorced, she said. He went east, she went west. Wally is still in prison. Deb has already remarried, she doesn't want to remember the past. There are too many bad memories for her. I can't find a trace of the girl I married, Jay spat. She just disappeared. Even her parents can't find her or don't want to tell me where she is. They just laugh at me like it's funny every time I call and ask about her. Speaking of wives, I said, how did you two end up living together? My face frowned as I said this. We're not together in the literal sense, Iris said. This is more for convenience. After spending my divorce money, I needed a place to live, and Jay needs help. Better tell the truth, Iris, at least once in your life, Jay said. I just smiled. Even after all this time, Jay was still a smug man. He couldn't even walk, but he had to prove that he had something that someone else wanted. It was so sad that he and Iris were still having intimate. Somehow, it didn't bother me at all. He could have it. I left it, leaving him his pride. We're not having real intim, Barry, Iris said nervously. I'm keeping this for you from now on. I had to try not to throw up in my own mouth. I'm telling the truth this time, dear, she said. Jay can't. He still has no feeling below the waist. I have needs, you know. I nodded. Iris, we all have needs, I said, glad.
glad yours are satisfied. Barry, I could meet your needs if you would let me, she said quickly. You know that you always come first for me. We can do this right now. I don't have needs that are being met, I said, but I'm glad you have, Jay. Barry, is this your car? He asked. Still in the Mustangs? This one looks heavily modified. I shrugged. Barry, you look good. You look rich. Looks like you're the only one from our old neighborhood who came out of it okay. Good things come to good people, what goes around comes around, I said. Barry, I've often thought, Jay said, that where our area used to be is now a huge shopping center. It seems that we all lost our homes just in time for its construction. Damn, it's almost like the Bible. Jay, do you want to know what really happened? I asked. His eyes widened and he nodded. It was obvious that he really wanted to know. This clearly tormented him, and I wanted to tell him too. I really wanted to tell them both, but I couldn't. I wasn't stupid enough to admit to things that could land me and Aubrey in jail. I loved our life together. I was even happier than with Iris. I did not envy Jay's grief, which became my beautiful Iris. In the end, I had the best, so I resisted my urge to tell them how we had deceived them. I didn't rub it in their faces, although I really wanted to. I'll tell you the whole story if you sign this, I said. I took out a set of documents that I kept in my pocket just in case. Marriage papers, he spat. When did you talk to Aubrey? Where is she? I saw her this morning, I said. It wasn't a lie because I had actually seen her that morning. These papers say she left me, he said. Well, it's true, isn't it? I asked. She left you when you were in the hospital. It's really true, Iris said. She has no income, I said, but she lives with a rich guy who will give you $10,000 if you sign the papers. You can do this, Jay. She will never come back to you. You can at least get something. In our state, divorce will take place within a year, regardless of whether you sign these papers or not. If you sign, I can arrange for her to bring you the check in person. Could you arrange this? He asked. I nodded. He grabbed the papers and was about to send Iris to get a pen when I realized I had one. I asked Iris to sign as a witness. Okay, Barry, Jay spat. That cold little country girl might get her divorce. She was never a real woman, she's just a decoration. Barry, if you want, I'm free tonight, Iris exclaimed. Maybe we can talk about ourselves. Iris, wait for that thought, I said. I need to go back to the car for something. Barry, you have to tell me about them all, Jay said. And I have one more question. Why was it so important for Aubrey to receive these marriage papers if she had already found a rich guy? Why did she need this? Jay, I'll be back soon, I said, smiling. I ran to the car and showed Aubrey the papers. She was so happy that I thought she might give birth right then and there. This would be bad because we had more than two months until the due date. I helped her out of the car, and we walked back to Jay's trailer. When we got there, Jay and Iris were looking at her like they'd swallowed their tongues. Hello, ladies' man. Hi, fat chick, Aubrey said sweetly. Well, Jay, I said, you wanted to know why it was so important to get these marriage papers? Now you know. To be honest, it didn't matter to me, but Aubrey really wanted us to get married before our baby was born. I keep trying to explain to her that there are no illegitimate children these days, but you know how it is. She's from a small town. Her parents are very happy for us, but they would be even happier if we got married. They never loved you, by the way. I think they have good taste. Both Jay and Iris began to recover from shock and made unintelligent sounds that could turn into anger or surprise. I think they're trying to talk, honey, Aubrey said. She gave Jay one of her biggest smiles. Jay, honey, guess what? I finally understood what good night is. It turned out that you just didn't know what you were doing. It didn't take long for Barry to show me what it was. Okay, while you two are trying to turn on your brains, I'll tell you a story, I said. I can see from your faces that you're shocked to see Aubrey and me together. Together? Yes, as you said, Iris, we are together in the truest sense. I love Aubrey more than I can express in words. 
Iris, you were a warm-up, I guess. I never knew what true love was until we got together, and we have you to thank for this, boo. Jay managed to say, still in shock from the sight of Aubrey. Aubrey stood there rubbing her belly and teasing her ex-guess what? We'll name the baby after you and your favorite football player, she said. Remember, you always told me that AJ was your hero growing up? If it's a boy, we'll name him that. I hugged Aubrey and continued talking. When I caught you, it started the whole process. I wanted to take revenge not only on you two but also on the other cheaters. But I'm not a cruel person, I couldn't physically hurt you, so I decided to do it financially. I had help in the form of karma. Burning down Wally's house really helped. My partner bought Wally's property as well as Bart and Chris's property. Jay, he was the one I talked into buying your house, and finally, I sold him my house. We rezoned the area to commercial, and now Aubrey and I are minority owners of this huge shopping center, as you called it. We have more money than we know what to do with, and we have each other. The only thing missing for complete happiness is for us to finally get married. I know you feel betrayed now, right? I asked. Jay nodded. I would never expect that from you, Barry, Jay said. Iris lay on the floor and cried. That's not like you, Barry. You could share this with us, Jay said. You know that I can't work. How could you? You were my best friend. This couldn't have happened to a more deserving person, I spat. Being your best friend didn't stop you from betraying me at the first opportunity. You took away the most important thing from me, and then you deserved it. In the end, we both got what we deserved. I'm much happier now, but what about me? Jay cried. Iris, I loved you so much back then that it was stupid. I knew what you were like in college, but I believed you when you said it was in the past and not the real you. I gave you a chance, and you betrayed me. Even after that, you couldn't help yourself. We caught you on camera less than two weeks after I first caught you. We never had a chance after that. You ruined everything for yourself. It's not my fault or Aubrey's, you did it yourself. Aubrey, do you have anything to say in your defense? Jay asked. You left me when I was in the hospital. You should at least give some explanation, and you have to tell Iris something. After all, you stole her husband. As I see it, our marriage ended when you started cheating on me, Aubrey said happily. You refused to give me a divorce, although I asked many times. As for Iris, she was stupid enough to cheat on a man who loved her far more than you ever loved me. Misfortune is the reward for stupidity. In other words, go to hell. I took Aubrey's hand and led her back to the car, and we drove away. I explained to her why I didn't tell her that we caused Jay's accident and the fire that burned down Wally's house, and that in fact, there was no mistake in demolishing Bart and Chris's house. She simply smiled and said she understood. Our child does not need to be born in prison. For couples in our area all started out as friends, but when deceit, deception, and betrayal entered our lives, they destroyed the area from the inside. To end the pain, the area had to disappear. We still get random calls from Iris or Jay, mostly, they want to apologize or try to start some kind of friendship. Lately, they have been complaining that the ground under Jay's trailer has become unstable and that the trailer is about to fall apart. Apparently, they expect some kind of help from us. What else are friends for? Ha ha. What do you think of our concluding part of this story? My favorite part of the story was the husband's moment of revenge when he started a relationship with another woman to spite his wife. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Until new videos.